رحمد و نسلی علی رسول کریم اما بعد ناو کم تو صورت الصف اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم سبح للہ معاف السماوات و معاف الارض و هو العزیز الحکیم یا ایوہ الذین آمنوا لما تقولون ما لا تفعلون کبر مقتا عند اللہ ان تقولوا ما لا تفعلون ان اللہ یحب الذین یقاتلون فی سبیله صفا کانہم بنیان مرسوس صدق اللہ العظیم رب شرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری و احلو لقدتا من لسانی یفقہ قولی دیس ٹین سوراز مدنی سوراز فرام حدید تو تحریم دی آر ان دی فارم آف فائیو پیئرز اینڈ دس از دی سینٹرل پیئر سورت الصف اینڈ سورت الجمعہ بیکاز وی ہیو فور سوراز بفور دم ٹو پیئرز فور سوراز آفٹر دم ٹو پیئرز دس از دی سینٹرل سورا سورہ حدیث اسٹارٹیڈ ود دی گلوری آف اللہ بٹ سورہ مجادلہ ود آؤٹ اٹس مینشننگ This was one pair. Surah Al-Hashr started, Sabbaha lillahi ma'af al-samawati wa ma'af al-lard. But Surah Al-Muntahina without it. It was the second pair. But now this central and third pair, it is unique in this sense that both these surahs are starting with this mention of glorification of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by everything in the universe. Moreover, change of tense. سورت الصف سٹارٹس وتھ سب بہا اللہ معاف السماوات و معاف الارض و ہو العزیز الحکیم ایگزیکٹلی دی سیم آیا وتھ وچ سورت الحشر اسٹارٹیڈ اینڈ دین دی نیکسٹ سورت الجمعہ اٹ ول اسٹارٹ یو سب بہ اللہ معاف السماوات و معاف الارض ہیئر اٹ از پاس ٹمس اینڈ دیئر اٹ از مزار اینڈ مزار ان عربک گرامر اٹ کورس دی پاس دی پریزنٹ اینڈ دی فیوچر بوتھ ٹینسز So it covers the whole time. And Mafi Samawat and Mafi Lord covers whole existence, total universe. Universe is not a sufficient word. Total existence is Mafi Samawat and Mafi Lord. So now it has, so to say, engulfed everything, encompassed everything, and all the time. Everything in this universe has been glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from ever, is glorifying at every moment will continue to glorify it forever now the rebuke or the reproach a very important i told you in the very beginning go common feature of these surahs ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu lima taquluna ma la tafalun oh you who profess to believe why do you say what you do not do this difference this gap which means saying something, doing something else. If you look to your utterances, well, they are very high. And if you look to, look to your behavior, deeds, they are very low. Well, this gap, it's most hateful in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And taqulu ma la tafalun. that you should say what you do not do. This makt is more than wrath. You know, anger, you become angry with a friend when he does something which you never expected of him. Or your son, he has done something which you never expected. So you are angry. Then wrath is a higher form of anger. But there comes a stage when you have no hopes from some person. So now there is no anger. In Urdu we call it Bezari. Bezar ho jana. No hope. So this is a higher level than wrath or anger. Makt. This word has appeared in Surah Al-Nisa. Sa Makta. People... In the Jahiliyyah period, before Islam came in Arabia, 
they used to marry their mothers, not real mothers, stepmothers. A person has died, he has left four wives. Now, the eldest son, is he is the inheritor, and he, how all the four have not you know, born him, so he was born by one mother. All the three he takes as wives. Very bad, very bad. For this, this word appears in Surah Al-Nisa. So that is the same word. Kabura maktan in the lahi an taqulu ma la tafadun. Now the fourth ayah. It's the climax. If you are a true mu'min, it means you claim that you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Zalladina amanu ashaddu hubba lillah. That is absolutely necessary. That is logical result. Real iman, total obedience with extreme love. These two things go to make ibadah for which we have been created. Now if you love Allah, let Allah tell you, Allah who loves whom? Inna Allah yuhibbu allazina yuqatiluna fi sabilihi saffan. Indeed, Allah loves those of his servants and bondsmen who go to war for his cause, go to fight in his way, in ranks which are so well compacted, so solid, as if it's a reinforced structure. No cracks. So this is the highest virtue in Islam. It's very important. Every philosophy has a concept of highest virtue. What's the highest virtue according to Islam? That you go to war for the cause of Allah. Inna Allah yuhibbu al-lazina yuqatiluna fi sabi lehi saffan ka annaum bunyadun marsoon. Now you peep down in your hearts and search your souls. Are you ready for that? And this is the surah I told you. In 14 ayat, the purpose of the advent of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is clearly given. Why we have said Muhammad? And then a very forceful, very passionate call to those who say we believe in Allah and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. To devote themselves to fulfill that cause. So simple. So the climax of that is to go to war in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now in the next four ayat, there is a mention of the history of Bani Israel. They were the former Muslim Ummah. Just recall the position that has been given to you now. They had that position for 2000 long years. From 1400 BC to 610 AD. 2010 years, they were the representatives of Allah on earth. But what they did, this should be a sign of fear for you. Maybe you also tread on the same path. Just recall, when Musa said to his people, Oh my people, why do you annoy me? You very well know. I am the messenger of Allah to you. You accept me as the messenger of Allah. Then you disobey me. You quarrel with me. You don't do what I ask you to do. And this is the situation actually. The whole thing is discussed in Surah Al-Maidah. When after the book was given to Musa alayhi salatu was salam, and now this Bani Israel, which was a nation up till now, has now become the Ummah, Muslim Ummah. The Ummah actually is on the basis of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now they were said to go enter Palestine and conquer it. But to conquer Palestine, they had to go to war. And if you go to war, you have to risk your lives. They flatly refused. Go you Musa 
and your Lord. And let me add, take your staff also with you. You have shown so many miracles with this staff. Go and expel those people from that land. Then we shall enter. Now the condition, the emotional and psychic condition of Musa a.s. at that was of mocked. Bezari. That is why he prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rabbi inni la amleku illa nafsi wakhi. Fafruq bayna na wa bayna al-qawmi al-fasikhi. Oh my Lord, I don't have any power over anybody else except myself and my brother Harun. And the whole community is giving flat reply. Now please, I want that I should be separated from them. I don't want to stay with them. now. This was the Bezari, Makht of Musa, who so much loved his nation, that when it, Timti was quarreling with an Israeli, and he had struck him with his fist, and done away with him. But now, this is the Makht. So he said, why do you annoy me? Why do you pinch me? فَلَمَّا زَاغُوا وَزَاغَ اللَّهُ قُلُوبَهُمْ When they took the wrong turn, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made also their hearts turn in that wrong direction. This is most important ayah of the Quran regarding this law under which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives guidance or leads astray to anybody. If you turn towards right, Allah will help you. If you take a wrong turn, well, Allah will make your heart also deviant. First decision is yours. When they took the wrong turn, they swerved from the right path. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused their hearts also swerve in the same direction. Wallahu la yahdil qawmul zalimin. Allah doesn't guide such evildoers. And what does it mean? Allah does not forcibly guide. This is not the law of Allah. He neither forcibly guides nor forcibly sends astray anybody. If he uses force, caution, then there is no question of test. No. The choice is yours and it's free choice. Whichever way you take, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make that way easier for you. So that was the behavior of Bani Israel with Hazrat Musa. Now the second phase of the history of Bani Israel. The second messenger who came to them. And when Isa son of Maryam said, Ya Bani Israel, O children of Israel, Inni Rasulullah ilaykum. Verily, I am the messenger of Allah towards you. Musaddiq al-lima bayna yadayya min al-Tawrah. And I confirm whatever is present before me from Torah. Maybe some of Torah has been lost. Because 600 years before the coming of Isa, the real Torah had vanished. When Nebuchadnezzar destroyed Jerusalem in the year 587 BC, after that the real Torah is not there. So maybe some of it is lost. But whatever of the Torah is present before me, I confirm it. On the one hand, I confirm Moses and Torah, and on the other, and I have brought to you the glad tidings of a messenger who will come after me. Ismuhu Ahmad. His name is Ahmad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is one of the five names that the Prophet said, I have five names. And this is a hadith in Bukhari from Jubair ibn Mutrim رضي الله تعالى أنا محمد أنا أحمد أنا الماهي أنا الحاشر أنا العاقب My name is Muhammad also Ahmad also Mahi Mahi who will eliminate the falsehood from the world Hashir who will gather the people. First to be resurrected will be Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And all the other will be resurrected after him. And Al-Aqib, I am the last of the, all the messengers. 
سو دس از ہز نیم فلما جاؤ بل بینات بٹ وین عیسا کیم ٹو دیم ود دی موسٹ گلیٹرنگ میریکلس آف دی ہسٹری آف آل دی میسنجرز آف اللہ دی بگیسٹ میریکلس ور گیون ٹو حضرت مسیح علیہ السلام بٹ وٹ دی دے سے دی علماء آف بن اسرائیل کالو ہاز سہر مبین دے سیڈ دس از کلیئر اینڈ مینیفیسٹ اینڈ پلین سورسری اینڈ نتھنگ ایلس ریجیکٹڈ ومن اظلم ممن افترا علی اللہ الکذب ابو و یدعا علی الاسلام اینڈ ہو از مور ایول ڈور دین دی پرسن ہو فور جیز اے لائی اگینسٹ اللہ سبحانہ و تعالی وائل ہی از کالڈ ٹوڈس الاسلام اے میسنجر از کالنگ ٹو دیم کالنگ دیم ٹو اسلام عیسا کال دیم ٹو اسلام اللہ ربی و رب کم فابدو حاضا سرات مستقیم بٹ دے سیڈ دس از سورسری دی میریکلس دیٹ اللہ گیو دے سیڈ اٹ از سورسری و اللہ لا یہ دل قبر عالمین اللہ ڈز نٹ گائڈ سچ ایول ڈوئرس سچ ان جسٹ پیپل اگین دیٹ ورلڈ فورسیبلی اٹس ناٹ ہز رول ٹو فورسیبلی گائڈ سچ اے پیپل ٹوڈ دی رائٹ پاتھ نو دس فورتھ آیا of this second first four ayat the address was to the muslims a sort of reproachment a sort of rebuke then you see backward look to the history of the former muslim ummah may it shouldn't be that you should also meet the same fate but now this fourth ayah in the second part yuriduna la yutfu nur allah bi afwahihim And this Yuriduna, actually, it denotes only the Jews. These Jews, these Bani Israel, now the third phase has come and Muhammad has been sent by Ya Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as a messenger to all the people of the world. But now they are enemies of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they want to extinguish the light of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala by blowing their mouths through their mouths. This is the character of Jews which has not changed. This was the character at the time of the Prophet Sallallahu always hatching conspiracies, instigating others, oh, you come out, you attack, we shall help you from inside. The worst enemies. And that has continued throughout history. It's a fact that the Muslims gave them refuge in Spain. They were persecuted badly by the Christians in Europe. But Muslims gave them respect, rest, everything. Bin Yorion has said that Muslim Spain was the golden era of our diaspora. But then, they were the people who conspired and instigated the Christians to launch the crusades. It was instigated by them. Although when crusades started, then they were also beaten along with the Muslims. But originally they were the instigators. And today now, Zionism, and especially when they have conquered the Christian world, they are the worst enemies. They are hatching plots. And that time is not very far off when there will be a final confrontation between the deen of Allah, deen of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the world of Judaism and Christianity. In the forefront will be Christians, but actually at the back and controlling them and directing them will be the Jews. And that Armageddon or Al-Mulhamutul Uzma is not very far off. going to come very soon now. Yuriduna la yutfu nur Allah bi afwahihim. They intend to extinguish the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with their mouths, that is by blowing. Wallahu mutimma nurihi walau karihal kafirun. And Allah has decided that he will perfect his light. Although this might be not pleasant, not liked by the unbelievers. 
this perfection of light will be when? When Islam will become dominant over the whole of this globe. The light essentially was perfected at the time of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But you know, the area it covered was not the whole of the globe. But this light is to shine over the whole of the globe according to the prophecies of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now this ayah number 9. This is not only the central axis of this surah. This plus ayah number 25 of surah al-Hadid. They are the axis of the whole of Quran. That, that ayah number 25 surah al-Hadid has slightly changed in the case of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you recall, لَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُلَنَا this was in plural. A general rule. لَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُولَنَا بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ وَأَنزَلْنَا مَعَهُمُ لِمَعَهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْمِيزَانِ لَيَقُومَ النَّاسُ بِالْقِسْتِ Now this general principle when applied to the advent of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم this is the form. هُوَ الَّذِي أَرْسَلَ رَسُولَهُ Now this is singular. It is he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has sent his messenger, that is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, bil huda wa deenil haqqe. Now, bayyanat, the miracles. In case of Muhammad, the miracle is also Quran. So, kitab and bayyanat are merged into this book. Bil huda, al huda, this Quran. And the balance has perfected with the advent of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the form of deenul haqq. Now, it's a full system of life. A full political, socio-economic order. It is he who has sent his messenger with two things. With the total guidance, the final guidance, the complete guidance, that is Quran. And the deen the just political, socio-economic system of life. What for? So that he makes it dominant over all the systems of life. Although the associators with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of false gods or false deities, they will never like it. But it is duty to do it. So now Muhammad was not only a bearer of glad tidings and a warmer, but also a revolutionary role was assigned to him. We have that in Surah Al-Shura. Umirtu bainakum. I have been sent to establish justice amongst you. And all our passengers we send for this purpose, the Yakuman Nasu will kiss so that people should abide by justice. And now that justice has been perfected. In the form of Dinul Haq. Now to establish it over the whole human life. Not a part of it. Without any exception. This is the role assigned to him. This is the mission given to him. And for this now, those who claim that we believe in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a very passionate call is being issued to them. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu hal adullakum ala tijaratin tunjikum min azabin alim. Oh, you who profess to believe. Should I guide you to a trade? The profit of which will be that you will be saved from the painful chastisement of the hereafter. I told you this word trade is used at many places in the Quran. Simple to understand. If you are in a business, you must have some capital and then you have to work. In the same way. What for? You want some profit. In the same way. You will have, have to enter into a business. You will have to spend your money, your belongings, your wealth, and also your hard work, even your life. If you want to be saved from the painful chastisement of the day of, of the hereafter. Now what does it mean? If you don't enter into this bargain, and still you hope that you will have salvation in the hereafter. 
اٹس یور وش فل تھنکنگ اللہ ڈزنٹ گارنٹی اٹ اٹس اے کنڈیشنل تھنگ یو کین گیٹ سیلویشن بٹ یو ہیو ٹو ڈو دس بزنس ادر وائز دس آیا بیکمز میننگ لیس فیو ٹائل اینڈ وٹ از دیٹ بزنس تو منو نب اللہ و رسول ہیو ریئل فیتھ ان اللہ اینڈ ہیز میسنجر ہو ہیو بین ایڈریس یا یو ندین آمن اینڈ دے آر بینگ ٹولڈ ٹو ہیو ریئل بلیف یو ہیو دی بلیف بٹ دا یور بلیف از اونلی ایٹ دی ٹپ آف یور ٹنگس اٹ شوڈ گو ڈاؤن سنک ڈاؤن ان ٹو دی ڈیپس آف یور ہارٹ بتو جاہد نفی سب اللہ and exert your utmost strive your utmost in the way of allah to make the deen of allah supreme what is the way of allah le yuzhirahu ala ad-deen kulli to make the deen of allah supreme this is the way of allah to exert your utmost and you have two things bi amwalikum with your belongings wan fusikum and your lives zalikum khairul lakum in kuntum ta'lamu this is better for you if you know Now just recall ayah number 15 of Surah Al-Hujurat. We had a comprehensive definition of who is a real mu'min. إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ سُمَّ لَمْ يَرْتَابُوا وَجَاهَدُوا بِأَمْوَالِهِمْ وَأَنفُسِهِمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أُولَائِكَ هُمُ الصَّادِقُونَ Verily the true mu'mins are only those who believe in Allah and the Messenger. Then doubt not. Yaqeen. conviction and they strive in the way of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with their belongings and lives only such people are true when they claim that they are mu'min so there can be no iman without jihad fi sabilillah and here there can be no salvation without jihad fi sabilillah if even now we say that jihad fi sabilillah is not farz it's not obligatory is not ordained on us i am at a loss to understand that means we are belying quran quran says there's no real iman without jihad there's no salvation possible without jihad yaghfir lakum dhunubakum now what will happen if you do it allah will forgive you your shortcomings number 1 وَيُدْخِلْكُمْ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِ الْأَنْهَارِ And will make you enter the garden underneath which rivers will be flowing. وَمَسَاكِنَ طَيِّبَةٌ فِي جَنَّاتِ عَدْنِ And grant you very pleasant dwellings in the gardens of perpetual bliss. ذَلِكَ الْفَوْضُ الْعَزِيمِ This is the greatest kamyabi. This is the greatest success. It's very meaningful here. because another thing is mentioned after that wa ukhra tuhibbuna another thing which you love and that is nasrum min allah wa fathun qareeb help from allah and a near victory what does it mean these things have no importance in the eyes of allah in the eyes of allah the real success is the success of the hereafter whether in this world you succeed or not succeed is irrelevant if you have done whatever you could do you are successful nothing might have happened no revolution might have appeared you might not have seen the success your struggle crowned with success no harm if you have done whatever you could do if you have spent everything that you had you are successful that is the success it is additional thing this allah grants sometime and sometimes doesn't grant so many prophets of allah went from this world without any visible tangible success so were they failures no they were successful the nations failed and then they were destroyed very important for people who take the, this way this path actually they should stop thinking about success leave it if allah wishes it will come if no 
We don't care. We have to care for whether I am doing whatever I can do or I am sparing something, keeping back. That is the main issue. If I put everything, then I am successful. Now this actually, this surah was revealed in the year 6th after Hijrah. And this position had matured after the battle of Ahzab, trenches, Khandaq. I told you that after the battle of Ahzab, the Prophet had told the Muslims, لَن تَغْزُوكُمْ قُرَيْشْ بَعْدَ عَامِكُمْ حَازَا وَلَكِنَّ كُلْ تَغْزُونَهُمْ Now Quraysh will never be able to come and attack you. Now you will go towards them. So now the Muslims as a community, as an ummah, the companions of Muhammad sallallahu had passed that test when they stood fast in the battle of Ahzab. Though they had passed. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving them the glad tidings. Now, the help of Allah is near and very soon. Success will kiss your feet. So this is a particular, a, a time tide phenomenon. Not always. The way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is still trying you. But at that time, this was the time for this glad tidings. And that is why that very year the Prophet went for Umrah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and then the Treaty of Hudaybiyah was concluded, and Allah declared, Inna fatahna laka fatah mubira. The gates of success opened. Ya yuhalladina amanu kunu ansar Allah. Oh, you who believe or profess to believe. Be helpers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what do we mean? Allah is weak? No. But He is testing you that this way. If you help his deen, if you want to make his deen supreme, you are. By his blessing, he is taking you to be his helpers. Just as Isa, son of Maryam, had said to his disciples, Man ansari Allah, who are my helpers towards Allah. Now this is helping Allah and helping the messenger. Kunu ansar Allah, be helpers to Allah. And Hazrat Isa said, be my helpers towards Allah. The same two words came in the ayah of number 25 of Suratul Hadid. لَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا رُسُلَنَا بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ وَأَنزَلْنَا مَعَهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْمِيزَانِ لَيَقُومَ النَّاسُ بِالْقِسْتِ وَأَنزَلْنَا الْحَدِيدِ فِيهِ بَاسٌ شَدِيدٌ وَمَنَافِعُ لِلنَّاسِ وَلَيَعْلَمَ اللَّهُ مَنْ يَنْصُرُهُ وَرُسُلَهُ بِالْغَيْبِ Allah wants to see who are his faithful servants who help him and his messengers. So this is the help to Allah because this deen is Allah's deen. We want to make it supreme. And this is the help to messenger because to make it supreme was primarily the mission assigned to the messenger. So help to Allah and help to his messenger. قَالَ الْحَوَارِيُّونَ نَحْنُ أَنصَارُ اللَّهِ The disciples of Isa said, We are the helpers of Allah. فَآمَنَ الطَّائِفَةُ مِنْ مَنِ إِسْرَائِلَ وَكَفَرَ الطَّائِفَةُ Then the children of Israel got divided. A group of them believed in Isa and the other group, they denied him, rejected him. فَأَيَّدْنَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَرَادُوا بِهِمْ But then we helped those who had believed Against their enemies, Fasbahu Zahirin, and in the long run, they were the triumphants, they were the dominants. But please note, this thick, this thing took 300 years. Not immediately. Christians were badly persecuted by the Jews as well as the Romans. But there's no doubt the followers of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, they were very persevering, very persevering, very persevering. But then in the year 300 of Christian era, Emperor Constantine of Rome, he converted to Christianity. And the whole empire converted to Christianity. Now they were dominant. 
Now they started persecuting the Jews. And they were worst persecuted community at that time. From that time till the Muslims enter Europe. Now we come to Surah Al-Jumah. I have already mentioned, this is a pair, and the most central pair of these ten surahs. In Surah Al-Saf, three things are very clear. Number one, Bhai was Muhammad sent, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Huwa allazhi arsala rasoolahu bil huda wa deen il haqq li yuzirahu wa ladhi li kulli. Number two, if you are a true mu'min, if you want salvation in the hereafter, you have to make jihad for that cause. You have to do it. No escape. Number three, this jihad can reach the level of qital. Don't think it will always be a dawa only and a passive resistance. No, no, no. It is bound to reach that level when you will be required to lay down their lives in the battlefield. If you don't do it, don't hope for salvation. If you do it, then Allah will forgive you and make you enter paradise. And if you are not doing it, then kabura maktan in the lahi and taqulu ma la tafalu. Then stop saying that you are mu'min. Stop saying that you believe in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Don't say you believe in Allah and his messenger. Otherwise, saying something else and doing something else, it is not giving you any credit. It is adding to the discredit every time. Now the question arises, where from to get those people who will do this jihad in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? First of all, there should be man force, man power. For that's what is the basic methodology of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the topic of Surah Al-Jumah. How he gathered people? How he trained them? That was most important. Unless you have a party, group of most committed people ready to sacrifice everything, ready to lay down their lives. How can you proceed? But where to get these people from? Do they grow somewhere? Are there some trees? The fruit of which are these people? No. How? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Yusabbihu lillahi ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ard. Lahul mulk. Al-Malik al-Quddus al-Aziz al-Hakim. This is the second place in the whole of Quran where four names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala come consecutively. The first was also in this series, Surah Al-Hadid, who was awwalo, was akhiro, was zahiro, was batin. Here without wow, Al-Malik Al-Quddus Aziz Al-Hakim. Everything is glorifying and will continue to glorify forever, whether that thing is in the heavens or in the earth. Glorifying whom? Allah, who is the king, the sovereign, the holy, the mighty, and the wise. Huwa allazhi ba'asa fil lummiyina rasoolam minhum. It is he who has raised from among the unlettered ones a messenger from among themselves. What does this messenger do? Now this is the crucial ayah. Yatlu alayhim ayatihi wa yuzakkihim wa yu'allimuhumul kitaba wal hikmah. These four terms are very basic, very essential. Repeated four times in the Quran. In the prayer of Ibrahim and Ismail, Rabbana wa ba'asihim rasoolam minhum yatlu alayhim ayatika wa yu'allimuhumul kitaba wal hikmah wa yuzakkihim. Then when Allah says, we have granted the prayer of Ibrahim and Ismail and advent of Muhammad is actually the manifestation of the prayer of Ibrahim and Ismail and Ibn Salaam. كَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا فِيكُمْ رَسُولًا مِّنْكُمْ يَتْلُوا عَلَيْكُمْ آيَاتِنَا وَيُزَكِّيكُمْ وَيُعَلَّمُكُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ Then for the third time in Surah Al Imran, لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْبَعَصَ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ And for the fourth time here. 
Now, this is the basic methodology. How he changed people? First, recite unto them the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is like a magnet. The first experiment that we did in fifth class, I think, science class, science laboratory, there's a mixture of iron filings and wood pieces. How to separate these two? A mixture. Take each and one, no. Take a magnet, move it. The iron filings will stick to the magnet and the wood will remain. This Quran is the magnet. To it, immediately get attached the people whose spirits in them have not died. Whose nature is still salim, not perverted. Healthy nature, they will come. So this is the magnet you in the society, you go on reciting Quran. As we found in in the Alika La Zikra, Liman Khan Allahu Kalbun Aw Al Kasama Bahua Shahid. They will come. They will come and gather around you. Now the second task is use the key and purify them. If they have some impurities in them, purify them. What are the impurities? Some bad habits may be there. Some wrong deeds, purify. Some worldly ambitions might be there. Purify the hearts. From the worldly ambitions. And now, when they are purified from within, and within has two aspects. Purification of the brain, that is the thought. Purification of the thought. And purification of the intentions. Niya, that is in the heart. When this purification has taken place, now teach them the book and the hikmah. Three stages. Yatlu alayhim ayatihi wa yuzakkihim wa yu'alli muhammul kitab wal hikmah. This was the basic methodology of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He continued this work, continued this work for 12 long years at Makkah. So about 150 people gathered around him, purified them, organized them, taught them. The book and the wisdom. Now those were the people who were in the vanguard for jihad fi sabirillah. For two years, no Ansari was included in jihad fi sabirillah. It was a purely, exclusively Buhari phenomenon. Ansaris were called only at the Battle of Badr. The eight expeditions before Badr, they were exclusively Buhari phenomenon. This was the group prepared by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam through this process of yatlu alayhim ayatihi wa yuzakkihim wa yu'allimuhum al-kitab wa al-hikmah. Wa in kanu min qablu lafi dhalalim mubin. Verily, before that, they were in a very manifest error. Wa akharina minhum. And we have raised this messenger of ours, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, not only for these unlettered people, others also who will be eventually with them but they have not up till now joined them. Because he is said for the whole of humanity. After the Arabs, the Iranians will come. The Coptics will come. The Berbers will come. The, you know, Turkistanis will come. The Sindhis will come. The Indians will come. So these are also. He was said for them also. But primarily, because he was himself from among the Ummiyin. So his primary advent was for the Ummiyin. He prepared an Ummah whose nucleus was consisting of the Ummiyin. But then, you know, the electrons, one after the other, coming and, you know, sir, circum uh, ambulating that nucleus. So this is the constitution of this Ummah. They have not joined them up till now. Wahoo Azizul Hakim and definitely he is almighty and the wise. I have told you before, these two names of Allah are repeated in these surahs 
most you know recurrently al aziz al hakim zalika fadl allah yutih man yasha this is the bounty of allah he grants it to him to whomsoever he wishes wallahu dhul fadl al azim and definitely allah is of infinite bounty now again just as we had the example of the former um muslim ummah the jews the bani israel now again example oh muslims you are today being given quran they were given torah what they did with torah see that you don't do that with quran masalul ladina hummilu at-torat thumma lam yahmiluha the similitude of those who were entrusted with the responsibility of torah but they didn't carry it out kamasal al-himar yahmilu asfara that is like a donkey laden with books on a donkey you might load you know volumes of philosophy or volumes of science to what avail for him in this same way an ummah which has been entrusted with the book of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't fulfill its duties regarding it i mentioned one of my basic pamphlets musalmano par quran e majid ke huquq what the muslims owe to quran it is present in english also urdu also persian also arabic also besa masalul qaum alladheena kazzabu bi ayati la very bad and wretched is the example of the people who belie the revelations of allah now this is takzeeb did the jews ever say that torah was not sent by allah never but this is the practical belying when you don't act upon it that is you are belying it with your action had you really believed this is the word of allah you would have acted upon it this means you are saying something else doing something else your attitude denotes something else wallahu la yahdi alqaum zalimin and allah doesn't forcibly guide such evil doers and what is the reason of this this attitude of a muslim ummah the muslim ummah when it is entrusted with a high mission instead of looking to the responsibilities of that mission they take pride that we are the muslims and we are the muslim ummah and we are the ummah of the prophet of messenger on this pride they think that they are entitled to salvation whatever they do the salvation in the hereafter is their birth right they must get it so then if the salvation is your birth right what's the need of doing something why to differentiate between halal and haram permissible and forbidden why do whatever you like you will get the salvation anyhow qul ya ayyu alladhina hadu in zamtum annakum awliya lillahi min dunin nas say oh you who have become jews if you assert that you are alone allah's friends apart from the rest of the mankind fatamannul maut in kuntum sadiqin then you should long for death if you have real love with someone you want to meet him not to be keep away from him if you love allah and if you really think that allah loves you then you should die and go to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wala yatamannawna hu abadan and they are not going to long for this death bima qaddamat yadihim because of the deeds that their hands have forwarded for them wallahu alim bil zalimin allah very well knows these evil doers قُلِ إِنَّ الْمَوْتَ الَّذِي تَفِرُّونَ مِنْهُ The death from which you flee فَإِنَّهُ مَلَاقِيكُمْ Surely it will encounter you. It will come and meet you. You might be running away from the death. But it will come before you. ثُمَّ تُرَدُّونَ إِلَىٰ عَلِمِ الْغَيْبِ وَالشَّهَادَةِ Then you will be returned to Allah who is the knower of the seen and the unseen. فَيُنَبِّيَوْكُمْ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ and then he will tell you what you had been doing ya ayyuhal ladina amanu now this process with muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam continued this yatlu alaihim ayatihi wa yuzakkihim wa yu'allimuhumul kitaba wal hikma 
This was then institutionalized in the form of Friday. You know, there were no schools, no colleges, no books, no journals, no video audio tapes. So the only method of education, mass education, public education, was this weekly meeting of the believers. Take bath, change your clothings. If you have some scent, use it. Come to the mosque. And there, some, one in the place of the Prophet. The Prophet used to stand on that member. Now someone is standing, this is the member of Rasul, of the Messenger. And he will do the same job. This was the basic purpose of this Juma, which later on became a ritual. Nothing. رہ گئی رسم ازان روح بلالی نہ رہی اور فلسفہ رہ گیا تلقین غزالی نہ رہی nothing left in it it's a ritual that's all which was actually the greatest system of mass education adult education public education reminding them reminding them reminding them you have been entrusted with a mission کنتم خیر امت نخرجت لنہ تامرون بالمعروف و تنہون عن المنکر to remind them that was actually the purpose. Every revolutionary party, every revolutionary party, even the communists, they used to have their weekly meetings, renewing their thoughts, their ideologies, so that they remain fresh in their minds, so that they are fully engaged in the struggle. And this is it. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِذَا نُودِيَ لِلصَّلَاةِ مِنْ يَوْمِ الْجُمْعَةِ فَاسْعَوْا إِلَىٰ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَذَرِ الْبَعْرِ O you who believe, when the call is given for the prayer, congregational prayer, on Friday, that is the Jumma prayer, فَاسْعَوْا إِلَىٰ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ to hasten to the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَذَرُ الْبَعْرِ Leave all your trading, everything. ذَلِكُمْ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ This is Good for you if you only know. It was so important that the Prophet said, مَنْ تَرَكَ سَلَاسَ جُمُعَاتٍ بِغَيْرِ عُذْرٍ لَيَخْدِمَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَىٰ قَلْبِ Whosoever Muslim leaves three Friday prayer sermons, congregations, without attending them, without there being a real cause, why should we seek? That is something else. بِغَيْرِ عُذْرٍ Allah is sure to seal his heart. This is so important. When the prayer has been concluded, and the most important part of Juma is not the prayer, it's the khutbah. Prayer, you know, Zohar has four rakat. And in Juma, there are two. Prayer wise, not important. It's the khutbah actually. Because that is meant for education. Renewing the ideology in your minds. So that is the essential part. Faiza qudayati salatu when the prayer has been concluded. Fantashiru filam. Then you can or you may disperse in the land. Wabtahu min fadlillah and seek Allah's bounty. And remember. Waskuru Allah kaseer Allah alakum tuflihoon. Remember when Allah much. So that you are successful. Now a special event is in the background of the last ayah of this Surah Juma. Once there was much dearth of grains in Medina. No wheat, no rice, etc., etc. And then when the Prophet ﷺ was giving his sermon on you know, Friday, there was, the bells started ringing that some caravan is coming. They came to know that a caravan has come, you know, and then uh, there is grain. So if other people go first, maybe they are finished. So most of the people ran and left Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying his sermon. So on this, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has, you know, rebuked them. And when they saw some merchandise or sports, 
they dispersed headlong to it, flocked to it eagerly and left you, O prophet, standing. It is said that at that time, this Juma sermon was also after the prayers, just as we have in Eids. In Eid al-Fitr, Eid al-Azha, first we pray and then is the khutbah. That was the case at that time, then it was changed. Khutbah before Salah. First you take the name of Allah and then you pray. But at that time it is one of the opinions. That because people thought Salah we have already completed. Now this is Khutbah. So there is no great importance of it we can go. No. But the, the real essence of Jumah is Khutbah. It is the sermon. It has made, Khutbah has made Jumah the Jumah. Otherwise there was Zohar Salah. Ulma in the Allah khairu min Allah wa min tijara. Say to them, whatever is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is much better than the sport and the merchandise. Whatsoever is concerns this world, this is much better which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has for you as reward. Wallahu khairu raziqeen. And you should have the faith that Allah is the best provider. He will provide for you. Now to sum up this pair of those two, two, two surahs. The most important part of Quran regarding the issue of the advent of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why was Muhammad sent? Not only as a preacher, not only as a teacher, not only as a bearer of glad tidings, not only as a warner, but also to make the deen of Allah supreme. To establish it as a whole political, socio-economic system. This should be clear, absolutely. And this ayah, It appears three times in Quran. Surah Al-Tawbah, then we have read in Surah Al-Fat. The last part is different. But this part, major part, it is repeated without the change of a dot or a letter. So for that, alone Muhammad cannot do it. He needs helpers. Faithful helpers, committed, devoted, ready to sacrifice everything, disciplined, in the habit of listening and obeying. Moving when commanded, stopping when ordered. So now this work has to be done by those who say, who claim, with the believe in Allah and His Messenger. For this purpose, first of all, through Quran, dawa of Quran, dawa through Quran, call people toward this path. Whosoever has some life within him, not the physical life, but the spiritual life, he will respond. Sooner or later, there might be difference, but he will respond. He will accept. Now you have to purify their souls, their characters, their thought, their intentions. Teach them the book of Allah and the wisdom of that book of Allah. Now prepare them. And then, when the time comes, challenge kufr and batil and tahut. Challenge it in the battlefield. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if he decrees, his help will come and you will be successful. Otherwise, if you have laid down your life for that cause, you are successful. The real success is the salvation of the hereafter. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Quran al-Azim wa nafani wa iyaakum bil ayatul hakim.